Hello friends. This is Revenger What If. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto was born in the world of X-Men Evolution, the Mutant Revolution? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. I understand that you don't believe in my cause. I'm glad that you choose to fight for your beliefs, but you know as well as I do that none of you can ever hope to defeat me. I have all of your abilities and I have trained in them to their utmost potential. Please don't make me use them against you. All of you are my family and I just want you to live in a better world. I'll do anything to make that happen, even if it means having to become the villain of the entire world. Finishing his speech he could see that they really didn't want to fight him, however, just like him, they were fighting in what they believed in. They believed in saving the world. He believed in changing the world. I see that none of you are going to back down. Unfortunately, that means I'm going to have to fight you all until you stay down. I'm sorry. Focusing, he brought all of his power into being. The sky darkened as lightning struck the ground. The ground trembled as it rose to meet his call. The air began to pick up as it readied itself to fight for him. Those with the ability to connect with the astral realm could feel as it shook and were nearly overwhelmed when the phoenix force appeared at his beck and call. Everyone could visibly see him going through changes. His muscles expanded, his body began to glow red, the gravity around him fluctuated, his eyes began to glow red, his hands began to glow as he gathered energy in them. As he began to float, everyone could clearly see and feel his power. He was stronger than any of them. He proved it when he defeated Apocalypse during his second assault. He proved it when he destroyed Master Mold. He proved it when he defeated the Phoenix Force and took its power for his own. He was as close to a god as anyone could be. He was going to fight them with everything he had and they had to do the same if they wished to survive. Those there had often felt like the world was going to end, however, it never felt as real as that one moment. Fighting against someone who may never have been an official ally, but always helped them through the hard times when they needed it showed them exactly how much was on the line. This one battle would change the future of the world forever. Thinking back on their first meeting with him, they never thought that he would ever become this. To some he was their friend, an ally, an enemy, to one a lover, but he meant something to everyone, he changed all of their lives. Now though, he was the most wanted man in the world. He had brought back the machines that Apocalypse used. He was planning on evolving the human race. He believed it would help make people understand that those born with the gift didn't have a choice, he wanted them to know that they wouldn't have a choice in what was happening so that they could better understand how mutants were treated by a vast majority of people. To make things worse, he promised that he would succeed, if there was one thing that everyone feared was when he made a promise. After all, Naruto Uzumaki never breaks his promises. What do you think? Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Naruto Uzumaki! wake up snapping open his eyes naruto sighed as he recalled the dream again for the last few years of his life he would have that same reoccurring dream every few days or so he knew that it meant something but he didn't know what what puzzled him the most were the flashes of images he always saw he saw flashes of orange fur giant creatures fighting some strange man with gray hair a man with an orange mask something pink and more recently the spinning red eyes Getting ready for the day, Naruto didn't know what he really planned to do. The weird pyramids that popped up all over the world was the main concern for everyone on the planet. School was cancelled until the crisis was over. His job was gone until his boss reopened the store. He had practiced his martial arts skills the day before and he had to let his body repair itself before he tried to do anything too strenuous. Sighing, he decided to just walk in a direction until he found something to do. Unfortunately, he found out that there would be nothing to do. The streets were abandoned. The stores were closed. There was no one outside. If Naruto had paid attention to current events, he would have learned that a group of mutants were currently trying to stop Apocalypse's plan from succeeding. Depending on your point of view, this turned out to be either a good or bad thing. As the mutants defeated Apocalypse, the machines he used to try and turn the world into mutants fell back down to Earth. One of these machines happened to be one of the main parts used to transfer Apocalypse's radiation onto the planet. This machine survived re-entry only because of its angle of descent. As it fell, it still tried to send out the radiation, but could only succeed in sending it a few feet from itself. 
When it crashed, a certain blonde was nearby and he went to investigate the crash. Because Naruto didn't know what the machine did, he walked up to the machine and looked it all over for a long time. Being so close to the machine and for such a long time, he absorbed all of the radiation that it had released and left it powerless. Naruto wouldn't know anything about that until much later. For now, he took a picture of it and called the police. He left as soon as he finished calling. He didn't want to deal with anything that night. Sighing, he decided to go home and sleep, for some reason, he felt exhausted. That night, as Naruto slept, his dreams had begun to change. He could now clearly see entire images clearly. Almost, like he was living through them. The sheer amount of information he saw that night he would not be able to comprehend until later, but he clearly saw some images much better than ever before. He saw a giant nine-tailed fox, a black-haired man with spinning red eyes, a pink-haired girl, a blonde-haired woman with a green rhombus on her forehead, a dark-skinned man with black sunglasses on dancing. There was one image that stood out among all others. He saw himself inside a giant glowing fox fighting six giant creatures. He would have seen more of the fight if a giant purple face didn't suddenly appear didn't causing him to wake up drenched in sweat. Sitting up, he saw that his hands were shaking. Shaking his head, he took a shower and got ready for the day. As the day progressed, Naruto began to feel strange, he sometimes felt energized. Other times he was exhausted. Once he even began to think about creating machines that were so complex he would later wonder how he thought them up. Once, while he was walking, he overshot his destination by over a mile. Which was strange, because he was walking a route he had walked many times. It only got worse throughout the day. Once, he swore he saw people's bones. Deciding to go home early, he closed his eyes and imagined his home and he was suddenly there. Blinking his eyes, he just shook it off as his exhaustion. Laying down on his bed, he just closed his eyes and went to sleep. Unfortunately, he would later wake up with a horrible headache. The headache would be from the noise he kept hearing. Sadly, no matter what he did, he couldn't drown out the noise. It wasn't until he screamed out for help that the voices finally stopped and he dropped into unconsciousness. The only downside was that he had just destroyed his room. When Naruto screamed for help, he hadn't screamed using his vocal cords. He had done so with his mind. Not only had he sent out a telepathic SOS, he sent it to every telepath he could reach. Good thing for him, two powerful telepaths received his message and began to try and locate him. Gene, according to Cerebro he's in Sacramento, California. When you reach the city, try and find him. That message for help seemed desperate. Don't worry professor. We're on our way already. Hopefully, we make it there before anyone else. Flying the X-Jet toward California were Gene, Scott, Logan, Aurora, and Magnus. You should reach him soon. I'm keeping track of anyone who could try and find him, but I see no movement nor do I sense anyone trying to find him. It seems we were lucky enough that no one else was able to mobilize quickly enough to find him. Charles, do you know anything about this new mutant? Age, gender, anything? After the recent events that occurred with Apocalypse, everyone seemed to want to try and get along. Almost dying made you appreciate life a bit more which was why the Brotherhood, New Mutants, and the X-Men were all trying to get along. There were and would be rough times, but they knew that they needed to stick together if they wanted to survive if anything else like Apocalypse happened. I'm sorry Magnus, but all I could get from Cerebro, was that it's a young man. Probably no older than Scott. Why his power is manifesting now at his age I don't know, but we'll figure it out when he has recovered. Charles Xavier was a happy man. He and his friend Magnus were finally working together again, after a very long time of being on the opposite side of each other. Unfortunately, this happiness was tempered when he remembered the vision he saw while linked to Apocalypse. Jean losing control of her powers and becoming one of their enemies weighed heavily on his heart. She was a very dear person to him, as were all the students in his school. They were his family. So, learning that she would one day lose control to an entity known as the Dark Phoenix made him feel powerless. However, he knew that the future could be changed, and he would do everything within his power to try and stop that horrible event from happening. With the help of the professor, Jean was able to find the mutant who sent the distress call. However, when they reached the mutant's room, they were surprised to see how destroyed the room was. They saw that destruction all centered on him. Picking him up, Logan felt lightheaded for a moment. It felt like Rouge had drained some of his powers. 
Looking at the kid, he wondered if he had the same powers as Rouge. Pushing that thought out of his mind, he focused on getting the kid to the jet. The flight back to the institute was eventless, except for the groans coming from Naruto. When they arrived, they quickly took him to the infirmary to get him checked out. As they checked him out the professor scanned his mind in order to find out what caused him to send out the massive telepathic message. Going through the memories, he saw all of what happened until he saw the strange machine that crashed landed. His eyes widened when he realized what the machine was and what it had done. It seems that we were not completely able to stop Apocalypse's plan from succeeding. One of his satellites crashed onto Earth, and it seems it had enough power left over to activate this young man's dormant X gene. We were lucky that we found him so quickly or he might not have survived. Professor, what exactly is his power? I'm not sure what his power is Scott. He seems to have telepathic abilities if his distress signal is anything to go by, but when I was scanning his mind I saw that he seemed to have gone through a variety of different abilities. Looking at Naruto, Aurora could tell something was amiss. You're saying that he just received his powers recently, correct? Then that means that his powers have yet to reach full maturity. If he was powerful enough to send a telepathic message across the country, then who knows how powerful he will be when they finish developing. He will need training. If he's left alone then his powers could run rampant and we don't need that at the moment. We don't want to alienate people any more than Apocalypse has. Magnus is right. For now, we'll wait until he awakens. Until then, we'll always have someone here to greet him when he awakens. We don't want to scare him. I'll look over him professor. I need to run some tests on his blood samples anyway. Thank you, Hank. Please contact us if he awakens. With that, everyone left to go along with their business. Two of you have to get these bells from me, one of you will fail. Now, let's begin. By the way, I'm a boy. Naruto Uzumaki huh? You have guts kid, and you lasted all the way until sunset. When I look at you I wonder, why do you get to live free, when I'm cursed? My father has tried to have me killed more times than I care to count. This is called the Rasengan. It was a jutsu created by the fourth Hokage. The Hokage job is nothing, but a death wish. Please Naruto, please bring Sasuke back. What do you know about family, when you've been nothing but an orphan all your life? Wake up. Naruto. Wake up. Snapping open his eyes, Naruto sat up quickly trying to shake off the various images that played through his mind. Never before had the dreams been so vivid. He could hear and feel everything that was happening. How are you feeling? Snapping his neck to the side, he was surprised to see blue fur. Then as he processed the image he recognized who this was. It was Hank McCoy. He learned about them during one of the few times he actually kept up with current events. I'm feeling okay. A lot better than I did when I passed out. That's good. Just rest until the professor arrives he can better explain what happened. With that Naruto decided to lay back and wait until this professor arrived. He wasn't disappointed as not even 10 minutes later, he heard a door open. Sitting up, he was met with a bald man in a wheelchair, a tall dark-skinned woman, and a man in a purple and red suit. It's good to see that you're awake Naruto. I'm Professor Xavier. This is Aurora and Magnus. We had hoped you would wake up soon. How do you know my name? I haven't told anyone of you my name. Please forgive me, while you were unconscious I looked into your mind to see why you called out for help. I learned your name and I know what caused your X gene to awaken even though you're older than most new mutants. Wait, I'm a mutant? How did that happen? I've had strange dreams, but I never thought I might be a mutant. Remember that strange object that crashed near you? That was a remnant of technology used by Apocalypse. Since you don't keep up with the news, you didn't know that he used it to spread radiation that would activate someone's dormant X gene. Because of that, when the satellite crashed and you approached it, it sent all of the radiation that it had left into you. That's what led to your headache, your strange experiences during the day, and what led you to faint after you sent a message for help. Finishing his explanation, Charles knew that he had to be ready in case something happened. He wasn't ready for Naruto to just lay down and sigh. Are you okay? I'm not really sure. I mean, I'm different now than I was before, but even then I never really got along with people. Not for lack of trying, but I was just never able to make any sort of connection with people. So learning that I'm even more different doesn't really have that much of an effect on me as it would for other people. I know, that I'm probably suppressing some of my emotions, 
but once everything sinks in I'll probably be a bit shaken. You're welcome to stay as long as you need Naruto, we'll always have a door open for you here. Thank you, professor. For now, I'll just think this stuff over. How can I contact you again if I have any questions? You only have to think it. If you wish to speak to someone else I can redirect them to you. Now, just rest here until you're ready to talk about what you want to do. With that Magnus, Aurora, and Xavier left Naruto to think about everything that had happened. Hank was still running tests on Naruto's blood samples and he found something strange within the cells. They seemed to have a glow in the nucleus, which was quite strange. Leaning back in his chair, he turned to look at Naruto, but saw him asleep again. Deciding to let Xavier know, he sat up and walked out to tell him in person. Remember class, chakra is the mixture of spiritual and physical energies. Spiritual energy come from exercise and experience. Physical energy comes from every single living cell in your body. Once the two are combined it is then channeled through the chakra circulatory system into any of the 361 chakra points in the body. Also, by changing the ratio of physical and spiritual energy you can change the type of chakra you create. Chakra can be manipulated in a variety of ways, but most common is through hand seals. When it's manipulated, you can then do things you might not have been able to before. There's much more to chakra than just that, but since you're all new students we won't go too deep into it. Now open your books to page. Opening his eyes, Naruto tried to focus on the dream. It seemed to him that when he became a mutant the dreams, if he could even call them that, have started to gain more detail and have become far more vivid. They actually seemed more like memories than dreams. Sitting up, he noticed that no one was in the room. Getting up, he saw a computer monitor that had an image of a blood cell. He also noticed that it seemed to be focusing on the nucleus. Looking at it, he made the image magnify to the point that he could see inside the nucleus at the glowing DNA strands. Hearing a hiss, he noticed that everyone was back again, this time led by Mr. McCoy. Ah, Naruto you're awake, I wasn't even gone five minutes. Yeah, I had a strange dream and it woke me up, but enough about that, what is this? Strange, I was looking at a blood cell, not DNA. Oh, that me. I wanted to see what was causing the glow inside the nucleus. How did you do that? You don't know how this operating system works or how to operate something this advanced. This came from a frowning Magnus. He did not believe that Charles had technology that the average teenager would be able to operate without any sort of training. I don't know. I just wanted to see what was causing the glow and it zoomed in. Could this be caused by my mutation? It might just be. There are a variety of mutants who have a variety of powers so it is entirely possible that you might just have something to do with technology. Aurora's calm speech kept Naruto from overreacting about his mutation. Whatever your ability is Naruto, you'll need training in it, here at my institute we have a variety of people who could help you. Closing his eyes, Naruto really didn't know what to do, he was going to need help, but first he was going to have to deal with the sudden change he's gone through. Listen up kid, since we really have no idea what your power is we'll have you tested in a variety of things. From technology, physical fitness, psionic abilities, and anything else we can think of. The grin that came when Logan said physical fitness told him all he needed to know about what was gonna happen in that department. More likely, he was gonna have to spar against one of the X-Men. This is gonna take a long time won't it? This came from Naruto who was kinda starting to regret the decision to stay at the institute. Kid, there's so much stuff that has happened to you that it could take months before we even know what you have. Just be happy that we have both Magneto and Chuck here to help. If it was just Chuck it would take even longer, but together those two are able to figure some of the most difficult problems. Trust me when I say that there's no better place for you. Here you can figure out what your power is safely. Even if something goes wrong we have plenty of people trained to handle almost any situation. The pride that came from Logan told Naruto all he needed to know. For some reason, he was able to easily trust the man. He felt that Logan wasn't trying to trick him or to hurt him. It's part of the reason that Logan was explaining things to Naruto. Everyone noticed that Naruto relaxed a lot more when Logan was around. The other was that if something went wrong Logan would be able to take almost anything thrown at him. Since, we have no real time limit we're gonna test your physical abilities first. Hope you're ready. The grin that followed that statement told Naruto that this was not going to be a fun test. Magnus, Aurora, what do you see? He's trained in fighting. 
probably trained in some form of martial arts. However, that's not what you're talking about is it, Charles? The speed and reaction time. He shouldn't have those for someone who's never been in an actual fight. As the fight goes on, Naruto is speeding up and his reactions are becoming smoother. Every time that Naruto gets better, Logan goes just fast enough that he shouldn't be able to avoid the hits. However, what we see is that every time that he does that Naruto goes and gets better. I believe that the longer the fight goes on the greater his fighting ability becomes. You're correct Aurora. Naruto has unconsciously tapped into his power to make him better able to face Logan in hand-to-hand -hand combat. However, I believe this is not the depth of his power. Should we end the fight professor? There's no need Aurora. It's been quite some time since Logan has been able to just let loose without having to fear about his opponent being unable to handle themselves. I have a feeling that they'll be just fine for quite some time. It's been two hours. How long is this test gonna last? This came from a haggard looking Naruto. He had been fighting Logan for the last two hours without rest. He could barely keep himself from being hurt too badly by Logan, even fighting back hurt. Damn, hitting him is like punching a wall. What the hell are his bones made of? Logan, however, was having the time of his life. The kid had started okay, but as the fight went on, the kid had gotten better and better. At first, it was only to see how the kid could fight, but now it was to see how good the kid could get. He wasn't disappointed when he saw that he only got better. If he compared the Naruto from two hours ago to the one he was fighting now, the gap in ability and skill was so large that he couldn't even think of a good way to explain just how large it was. Unfortunately, this really didn't get them much to work on except that Naruto might have some sword power that allowed his body to get better much quicker. However, he wasn't entirely sure about that either. From what he was told Naruto's power was much more mysterious than just that. Too bad he couldn't keep sparring against Naruto. They did have more tests to do and it wouldn't do to have him too exhausted. This test, Naruto, is to see if you have any sort of power that deals with technology. So all you have to do is make some sort of machine. You have a variety of parts to choose from and you can build a variety of things from them. Naruto nodded as Hank showed him everything he would need. However, there was something very important that he would need. There's only one problem. I don't know the first thing about building machines, physics, or technology of any sort. Naruto could tell that Hank wasn't expecting that. Oh, well in that case, let's start you off learning about them first. We have plenty of computer programs that can help you in learning about what you need to know so you can just check them if you need help. While he explained this, Hank turned on a computer and showed him the variety of programs that were available. Most of them were just programs that held information about the sciences, but some told him about math and things that were far more advanced than what he was taught in his public school. Stealing his resolve, Naruto sat down to learn about what he would need. Professor, I hate to inform you but apparently Naruto knows very little about technology. I showed him some programs that will allow him to learn about what he'll need, but I doubt he'll be able to build anything complex. Thank you for telling us Hank. I guess we should just skip this test and move on towards another. Hey if this is about earlier, then you should know that it was just some innocent flirting. Besides, aren't you overreacting? Jean didn't take any offense. Ducking under another optic blast, Naruto decided to take shelter behind a wall that sprung up. I'm starting to think that you really want me to get hurt. Hey, do you think that if I get hurt Jean would be willing to be my nurse? Quickly running from the blast that tore through the wall, Naruto jumped on a deactivated turret and started it up again. Aiming it at Cyclops, he let the turret fire. As expected Cyclops dodged all of the fire. Of course, Naruto never meant to hit Cyclops with the turret, it was so he could get a breather. The entire training session had been nothing, but Cyclops trying to blast him to bits. I guess I shouldn't tell you that Jean volunteered to show me around Bavel later today. Jumping off the turret as it was blasted, Naruto rolled and ran dodging the optic blasts sent his way. Seriously though, you don't even know me and here you are trying to kill me. Are you really that insecure that you think that Jean would leave you, or maybe it's that you don't trust her? Ducking under the optic blast, Naruto had enough. Eyes glowing red, Naruto let Cyclops have a taste of his own power. Cyclops was quick to match the blast, but Naruto quickly increased the pressure. Visibly struggling, Cyclops took off his visor so he could unleash everything he could. Unfortunately for Cyclops, 
Naruto had been practicing with Wolverine. He encouraged Naruto to use as much force as possible when they trained. As such, while Naruto was less experienced in using the optic blasts, he could actually release more power than Cyclops. This led to Naruto blasting Cyclops into a wall and knocking him unconscious. Falling onto his hands and knees, Naruto tried to get his breath under control. As he was still inexperienced in using Cyclops' optic blasts, using so much power exhausted him mentally. Pushing himself into a standing position Naruto walked over to Cyclops and picked him up. End training session, Naruto spoke out loud, walking out of the danger room, Naruto took Scott to the medical wing. Hopefully, someone else could take care of him while he went and took a shower. Quote dot dot dot, and this has the best pizza in the entire city, Jean said as they drove through the town. Over there though, you can find all kinds of amazing music. Rouge stated from the backseat. Old and new, Naruto asked while looking back at Rogue. Yup. Her smile got larger when Naruto took a picture of the place with his phone. However, Kitty got annoyed. She and Rogue had seen Naruto and Jean about to go on the tour when they decided to accompany them. Of course, it had nothing to do with the fact that they both found Naruto attractive. They just wanted to show the new guy around. So Naruto, how have you enjoyed your first week here? It had been a surprise for everyone when they had found a new person at the breakfast table. Of course, since everyone had their own schedule to keep, Naruto had to introduce himself many different times to the students. Most of the students were in a hurry though so all they got was a name. However, Jean and Scott had graduated so he spoke with them for a while. Mostly Jean though since she woke up at around the same time as Naruto. Of course Scott had to walk in on them when Naruto was flirting with Jean. It didn't help that Jean seemed to find Naruto hilarious. Things continued like that for the week until Scott couldn't take it anymore and told Naruto to meet him in the danger room. That resulted in the early morning workout. Jean tried to talk them out of it, but Scott wouldn't let it go. Because of that, she was fine with Scott being knocked unconscious, and just to make him mad, she took his car. It's been great. It sucks though that I have to retake the high school equivalency exam, but I have time to study up on anything I need to. Overall though, I can't really complain. I'm staying in a giant mansion, I have amazing new friends, and Charles says he'll sponsor my admittance to a university as long as I don't forget my responsibilities. I'm actually still struggling to comprehend everything that's happening. Ever since I could remember, I've had to work for everything I've received, so getting so much help and Charles not wanting anything in return. It's an alien concept to me. Because he was looking away, Naruto didn't notice the looks he got. Thanks for the tour Jean, and thanks for coming along Kitty, Rouge. It was great and now I probably won't get as lost as badly. If I need help can I ask you? Naruto asked as they arrived at the mansion. You can ask any of us Naruto. We all have to stick together anyway. Rouge said before Jean or Kitty could say anything. She took some pleasure from the annoyed looks she got sent. Thank you, I'll remember that. See ya, I have to train with Logan. Waving goodbye at Naruto, Rouge turned to look at Kitty. Aren't you and Lance a thing right now? She remembered seeing Kitty and Lance hanging out together a few days ago. We are currently separated. Besides, we should be, like, asking Jean here why she's currently giving Naruto a tour when she has Scott. The looks Rouge and Kitty gave Jean made her get defensive. Naruto is my friend. If I want to spend time with my friend, then I will. Besides, I don't have to explain myself to you. With that she slammed the car's door loud enough to make Kitty and Rogue flinch. Walking inside the mansion, Jean was unprepared to be met with glowing red spectacles. You took my car. Already annoyed, Scott's attitude did not help him win any points with Jean. Yes, I took your car. I told you not to attack Naruto and you did it anyway. Why are you so against him and I spending time together? He blatantly flirts with you in my presence, he can use my own powers against me, and worst of all he scratched my car. When Scott finished, he instantly knew he had made a mistake. Do you mean to tell me that your car is more important to you than our relationship? Jean asked in a calm voice which was betrayed by the rising of her hair and all of the other small objects in the room. No, that was an accident, it just slipped out, you mean more to me than my car. 
Reading his mind, Jean was able to see that it was true, however that didn't excuse the fact that he was so insecure about their relationship that he was taking it out on her. Setting everything back in place she steeled herself for what she was about to do. Scott, I really care about you, but you need to get over your issues. I think it'd be best to take a break from each other until you can figure out why you're so insecure about yourself. The shocked and hurt look Scott sent her way made her feel ill, but she knew he needed this. If they stayed together and he didn't get over his insecurities, they'd do or say something they would never be able to take back. Besides, it hurt her just as much as it hurt him. Walking past him, she tried to keep the tears from spilling down her face as she walked to her room. Shock and hurt quickly turned to anger and rage as Scott identified where things had gone wrong. It was all that Matthew's fault. Ducking under a slashing claw, Naruto sent a telekinetic blast at Logan to send him far away. Spotting a broken turret, Naruto quickly transformed it into metal spears and sent them flying. Not to be outdone, Logan quickly began to cut the spears into scrap when Naruto appeared to his left and let loose a super-powered punch. Quickly crossing his arms, Logan felt his arms rattle as he was sent flying. Regaining control of himself and landing on his feet, he noticed the telltale signs of telekinetic energy near Naruto's hands. Smirking at the kid's ingenuity, he rushed in low and managed to avoid the punch sent to his head by ducking. Preparing to skewer Naruto, he felt himself slow down a tiny bit. This window allowed Naruto to get a kick into Logan's jaw that sent him flying backwards. Once again regaining control of himself, Logan landed on a crouch and stood up. Spitting out blood he glared at Naruto, we agreed you wouldn't use your magnetism. My metal bones give you far too much of a handicap. Yeah, we did, Naruto said before he sent back the same logic, we also said that you wouldn't skewer me. It hurts to heal from that. Preparing a quip, Logan was unable to say anything when the danger room's doors opened and an optic blast sent Naruto straight into the wall. Shocked, Logan quickly turned to the entrance to see Scott in his civilian clothes. Walking inside Scott quickly lifted his glasses to blast Naruto again, when he was suddenly telekinetically sent flying. Walking out of the hole in the wall, Naruto cradled his left arm which had taken the brunt of the blast. Feeling it heal, Naruto looked up to see Scott about to prepare another optic blast. Using his telekinetic abilities, he bound Scott's arms behind him so that he wouldn't be able to lift his glasses. Walking up to him so that they stood face to face, Naruto asked, what the hell was that for? This is your fault Matthews. If you hadn't shown up, Jean wouldn't have broken up with me. Looking at Logan, Naruto saw that he was just as confused as himself. Looking back at Scott, he felt it'd be best to knock him unconscious. I think we should take him to the medical wing to see if they can explain exactly why Scott was calling me Matthews. Nodding, Logan and he left the danger room and went to the medical wing. I don't know how we missed it, but there's some brain swelling. It's the reason why Scott was acting so irrationally when it came to Naruto. From what I can tell, it's minor and he'll make a full recovery. However, what concerns me is that Scott didn't tell anyone he injured his head. Hank's diagnoses made everyone breathe a sigh of relief. I'll go tell Jean, I'm sure she'd be happy to hear that Scott wasn't being a jerk to me on purpose. With that Naruto left the medical wing and made his way up the mansion to Jean's room. However, as he neared her room he could hear sobbing. Getting closer to her door, he could hear it was coming from Jean's room for some reason. Knocking on the door he wasn't surprised to hear a, go away. Usually he'd leave, but his friend was crying and he wanted to see if he could do anything to help. Jean it's me, what happened? Hearing more sobbing and not getting an answer he decided he was going to let himself in. Jean, I'm coming in. Hopefully you're not naked, I'm sure Scott wouldn't be happy to hear that I got to see you naked before he did. Hearing the sobbing actually get worse, told Naruto all he needed to know. Jean if this is about Scott then there's something you should know. There was a reason for him not being himself. Hearing the sobbing stop, and some soft thumps Naruto wasn't surprised to see Jean open the door. He was surprised to see her in her pajamas with absolutely red puffy eyes. Before he could stare too long, he was asked a question, what do you mean? Is he alright? The concern in her voice made something inside of Naruto quiver, but he brushed it off. 
She needed him to focus on her not on himself. He's fine don't worry, but apparently he injured his head sometime recently and it caused some brain swelling. He'll make a full recovery, but it at least explains why he was so irrational when it came to things about me. Seeing the shocked look he was being given quickly turned into guilt that caused even more tears to come about caused some panic in Naruto. Knowing nothing about what to do, he decided to do what he had seen people do in movies to those who had been crying. He grabbed Jean and pulled her into a tight hug. At first he felt uncomfortable, since this was the first hug he had ever given, but it quickly began to feel nice. Unfortunately, he couldn't focus on just the sensations as Jean quickly tightened the hug and began to ball into his shoulder. Looking around, and seeing that they were starting to draw a crowd, Naruto began to lead Jean back into her room. Closing the door behind him, he just held Jean as she cried her eyes out. Within a few minutes Jean stopped crying and just held Naruto. I broke up with Scott not even an hour ago, and now I hear that he's been acting this way because of a head injury. God, how could I have not noticed it? The signs were there. He'd been having headaches and nausea for the past few days, but I just put it off as him getting sick since he doesn't take care of himself as well as he can. How can I ever face him again? Panicking on the inside, Naruto didn't really know what to do. Yeah, he could understand why Jean felt this way, but from what she told him it made sense that she would think he was just getting sick. It's rare for people to think of something like brain swelling being the cause of problems. Well, you couldn't have known. It sounds like you did what anyone else would have. Naruto said, which was apparently the wrong thing to say as Jean just tightened her grip again. But I should have known. I'm a psychic for heaven's sake. I should have noticed that something was strange with his brain. Jean stated while Naruto got a confused look on his face. Um. I'm pretty sure you can't tell when someone has suffered a brain injury simply by reading their mind. Jean seemed to accept this too as she just dropped her arms from the hug and simply leaned against Naruto. Don't worry, Scott cares a lot about you, once you explain everything and he's in a better state of mind everything will be back to normal. Feeling Jean moving to free herself from the hug, Naruto reluctantly let her. Wiping her eyes, she suddenly began to feel self-conscious. God. I must look horrible. Chuckling Naruto answered, Yeah, you do. The look he received quickly had him adding to his sentence. But considering what you went through and what you found out, it's actually quite amazing you're not an absolute wreck. Sighing at his pathetic attempts to make her feel better, Jean just smiled. Thank you Naruto. Now, I think it'd be best if I went to see how Scott is doing. Quickly getting the hint that she needed to change, Naruto nodded and left the room. Walking down the hall, Naruto couldn't help but think about those feelings that popped up whenever Jean spoke about Scott. He really wasn't sure what it was but he didn't know if he liked them or not. A week later, things had returned to normal for the most part. Scott's injury had healed perfectly and he was much more cordial with Naruto even if he still didn't like him hanging around with Jean. However, there was a noticeable change in Jean. It seemed that she began to second-guess herself more and more. It actually started causing problems with her and Scott. No one liked hearing their arguments. Things were coming along splendidly for Naruto though. He had taken the high school equivalency exam, he had retaken the sats, and he was even getting a better understanding of his powers. All he had to do was wait for the new results and hope that they'd get him into a university. Unfortunately, his dreams had begun to change. His dreams began to become very different. Every night he would dream that he was living an entirely different life. In one he was some sort of viking. In another he was a demon whose strength was unparalleled except by those who were considered gods. In another still, he dreamt of himself wearing red and purple armor and that he called himself Onslaught. Every time he woke up, he felt a little bit different. It was like these different versions of himself were leaving something behind. Sometimes he could tell what was different immediately. For example, after waking up from his onslaught dream, his psionic abilities had skyrocketed, as had his abilities with magnetism. They had jumped so much that he felt he had to keep them a secret. However, this didn't mean he didn't train these new abilities. He did, but he had to be careful. He usually spent some time in the middle of the night training when he could feel everyone sleeping. He did discover something accidentally that he knew that Magnus had not. 
The ability to control everything within the electromagnetic spectrum. It was exhausting, but it meant that his powers were far more than just mere magnetism. He had also begun to experiment with Jamie's powers. When he first saw Jamie's powers he was intrigued and as such he began to wonder what its limits were. He started small. One clone would watch TV and then fuse back with him and he'd gain its memories. After that he began to use them in order to learn. It was thanks to these copies that he was able to study for his exams, but afterward Charles told him not to abuse his powers. Unfortunately for him, Naruto didn't listen. If he could use his abilities in order to learn quicker or do things faster why shouldn't he? Besides, while he was grateful to Charles, he didn't see the problem. Yeah, he could understand some people getting mad or even jealous that he could learn so much quicker than them, but if they got angry because of that then they were the ones who needed discipline not him. It was due to this thinking that eventually lead to Magnus and Naruto speaking more and more. It was no longer just about learning to control his abilities with magnetism. It was because he could relate more easily with Magnus. This lead to Naruto learning about Magnus's past. He learned why he had such a hatred for humanity. He learned why he believed that mutants were the next step in evolution. He learned that Magnus did not believe there could ever be peace between humans and mutants. This lead to Naruto beginning to wonder about his own position about the problem. Did he believe that it was possible to coexist with humans as long as they hid their own powers as Xavier thought? Or did he believe that mutants could not coexist with humans like Magnus thought? This led Naruto to some worrisome thoughts. Charles had stated before that he wanted to help any and all mutants, yet Naruto had heard from the other students about a group who called themselves the Morlocks. They were mutants whose abilities could not be hidden because it caused some sort of permanent physical change. None of the students in the school had anything like that except for Kurt who used a disguise sometimes and Hank who did not often leave the grounds to go in public. Did this mean that Charles had known about them ever since they had formed and not tried to help, or he did but they had not accepted his help? In a way it made sense to not allow the Morlocks into the school. Their mutations were too drastic to allow them to be made known to society. If he wanted to introduce mutants as people who could help it'd be best to use those whose abilities were easily hidden or did not make them look any different than a human. Unfortunately, he couldn't really ask Charles this. Hell, he couldn't ask any of the X-Men this. Their faith in Charles would make them get defensive very easily. The only one he could ask was Magnus. However, Magnus had his own ideals and, from what he had observed, he was manipulative. Magnus would feed him a story that was either the truth twisted into something to help him gain Naruto as an ally or an outright lie. This led Naruto to experience something he thought he wouldn't have to deal with again. Loneliness. He couldn't speak to the X-Men. He couldn't speak to Magnus and his acolytes or the Brotherhood. Everyone had their own agenda. This left Naruto with a single choice. He would have to find the answers himself. This meant that he would need to find a way to train his technopathic abilities to even higher levels. He also needed to meet Forge. The ability to be able to construct machines beyond conventional science was very alluring. More than anything, he needed to prepare himself for when he would leave the X-Men, and he didn't know if it would be a cordial departure. Hearing the awe in Jean's voice just made Naruto smirk even more. It had surprised Naruto himself, when he found out that he had gotten perfect scores on both the SAT and the high school equivalency exam, HSEE. Unfortunately, Naruto could already see the problems that were going to pop up in the future. He had gleaned from the instructor's mind that he was going to have to fight for his scores. Xavier's home address was very publicly known as the Mutant House. In other words, people would do everything they could to make sure he didn't succeed. However, Naruto wasn't someone who would take things like that laying down. He inserted a mental probe into the instructor's mind. From there Naruto would be able to make the instructor ignore the fact that his home address was Xavier's home. Regrettably, this only worked for that one instructor. For any others he would have to personally make sure that they didn't try anything. This meant that he created two clones and then sent them along with his tests. For a few weeks two Naruto clones were making sure that his SAT test score and his HSEE weren't tampered with. Once the scores had been entered into the system and mailed, both clones rejoined the original and Naruto experienced how it felt to assimilate that much information. It wasn't horrible, but it was a bit uncomfortable. 
it would probably take a few attempts before he could get used to that feeling. This gave Naruto an idea, though. He could use his clones to expedite his learning. It wouldn't even be that difficult. His technopathic abilities had improved greatly after meeting with Forge, so hacking systems wouldn't be a problem. He had recently gained greater control over his transformative abilities so he couldn't be accused of being in multiple places at once. The only problem he could see was that he couldn't do all of this in just one place. Too many psychic presences in New York would alert Xavier to what he was doing. He would have to expand his range of operations. This meant that he would have to travel very long distances. With his super speed that wouldn't be a problem, but Naruto didn't look forward to the memories of doing nothing but running. Except, that was a long-term plan and at the moment it was irrelevant. Focusing back on the present he hugged Jean back as hard as she hugged him. I'm so proud of you. Have you told anyone else? Jean asked while still hugging Naruto. Shaking his head, Jean hugged him tighter. In the following weeks after the incident, as everyone began to call it, Jean began to spend even more time with Naruto and less with Scott. It wasn't a conscious choice, but ever since their fight she just didn't feel comfortable spending time alone with Scott. Amazingly enough, Scott didn't mention anything. It was mostly due to the guilt he still felt from the incident. It didn't mean he actually liked Jean spending so much time with Naruto. It was the exact opposite. He hated it when she spent time with him. Scott was just glad that Jean made it a point of their relationship to never read his mind, or he'd be getting a tongue lashing. So, when are you gonna tell the professor? That question made Naruto think. Xavier would support anything he chose to do, but Naruto didn't like the fact that he'd have to go against his ideals later on. It felt like betrayal and Naruto didn't like that. After everything that Xavier had done for him, Naruto didn't want to betray the man. At the same time though, Xavier's ideals felt stifling. When he'd been a normal human he always felt trapped in a cycle that would constantly repeat itself. Having had his X-gene activated, he had never felt so alive, so free. The problem was that, slowly but surely, he'd been feeling trapped again. He did his best not to show it, but he was sure that Xavier could tell that something was bothering him. Sighing, Naruto answered, I'll probably tell him when he comes down for breakfast. Releasing the hug, he went back to his own breakfast. However, his mind began to wander to the dreams he'd been having since he became a mutant. Just last night, he had a dream where Bobby, of all people, had taken over the world. The abilities he had shown when he crushed a rebellion had been incredible. This let Naruto know that his dreams weren't just dreams. They were visions of either alternate realities or possible futures. He didn't know which it was unfortunately. It did make him wonder if it was part of his own original mutation, or if it was a power he picked up on accident from someone. The likelihood of actually finding out which it was were so close to zero that it'd be easier to say he'd never find out. This in turn made him think about his own mutant power. Well, his original mutant power. The ability to assimilate other mutant powers. So much like rogues and yet so much more powerful. He didn't drain mutant powers like Rogue did. He just had to be near them and his own mutant power would assimilate it. The range he needed to be near someone depended upon how powerful the other mutant was. If they were powerful enough, he didn't have to be anywhere near them and he'd assimilate their powers. It's what happened when his power first activated. Xavier's psychic mind was so powerful that Naruto had assimilated it and used it on instinct, or that was what everyone else thought. Naruto wasn't so sure, he had assimilated a psionic power yes, but he didn't think he assimilated Xavier's. He had kept it to himself, but he thought that he had assimilated Jean's power, not Xavier's. It would help explain why he was so at ease with her and she with him. Their powers probably resonated with each other the same way that Scott's and Alex's did. It also meant that if they weren't careful using their powers on each other, they could dive too deep into each other's minds. Luckily though, Jean's powers were strong enough to keep his still developing ones from burying too deeply. However, at the rate at which his powers increased that wouldn't be a viable option soon. To add to that already gigantic pile of worry, he'd learned a few weeks ago that Magneto's powers weren't actually magnetism. They were electromagnetism. This revelation had led to him experimenting with them and learning that he could control and utilize the entirety of the electromagnetic spectrum the use of which exhausted him beyond measure. 
Except, that was a few weeks ago. Now, Naruto could use his electromagnetic abilities to a far greater efficiency. They no longer tired him out and if his rate of advancement was to be believed, he'd soon be able to do far more. There was a bright side to this though, he'd made himself immune to Rogue's powers on accident. The first time they tried to test Rogue's powers against his, it created a feedback loop that knocked the both of them unconscious. They started the test up again a few minutes later and to everyone's shock, Rogue had been unable to drain his power. Everyone had been amazed, but Rogue had trouble believing it. She'd been cursed for years to be unable to touch people without hurting them. To suddenly be able to touch someone, she broke down crying while she hugged Naruto without her gloves on. It had been on impulse, but Naruto has kissed her forehead and ran his fingers through her hair to calm her down. During that moment, everyone had left them alone in the danger room. Later on, Rogue confided in Naruto that she'd given up on being able to live a normal life of some sort, but being able to physically touch him had given her hope that one day she might. It didn't take a genius to figure out what she meant. Before he could say or do anything she had launched herself at him. What followed was a first for both of them. After their long bout of exercise, neither really knew what they were. Naruto was still discovering what he was as a person and Rogue enjoyed being able to finally touch someone. This led to a strange relationship forming. They were intimate with each other, but only in private. Neither one of them wanted people to find out. It was a secret relationship that they formed, and that's how they wanted to keep it. However, this led to Rogue going through a change. She did away with her purple eyeshadow and lipstick and instead just used red lipstick and black mascara. Blinking, Naruto realized he had spaced out. Looking around he saw that almost everyone had arrived. Seeing Xavier rolling in, Naruto was about to say something when he, Jean, and Xavier all turned their heads to the front entrance. Everyone immediately noticed that something was going on and as they prepared to defend themselves, Xavier rose his hand, stay calm students, it seems we have a visitor. Another telepath. With that Xavier, began to move towards the entrance along with Jean and Naruto. Jean went along to welcome another telepath while Naruto went along because he felt something was strange with this one. It was a strange feeling and it was difficult to put into words because it wasn't a gut feeling. It was something he was perceiving through his telepathic powers. However, he was able to figure out part of the feeling when the door was opened and he saw the new scion. It was apprehension. The moment he saw her smirk he knew that he'd have to be careful around her. It was something he'd gained through his years of living alone. To know when someone was just trouble. The new scion was blonde. She had blue eyes and wore matching lipstick. She wore an all white getup with a top that had a diamond cutout that exposed some of her cleavage. She wore white gloves that reached up to the middle of her upper arm. She even wore a cape that went over one shoulder. The most normal thing about her outfit were her pants. Hello, professor. I am Emma Frost. Emma said with a smirk while looking behind Naruto at Scott, who had just arrived. Upon looking at Emma, Scott let out a soft, whoa. He didn't even notice when Jean turned to look at him with a frown. Feeling a mental probe trying to reach into his mind, Naruto pushed it back violently. While he didn't have the control he wanted, he had more than enough power to stop unwanted intrusions into his mind. Seeing Emma flinch, he glared at her. Instead of being cowed, she just let out another one of her damn smirks. He knew that he'd end up hating that smirk quickly. Ugh, can you like believe these guys? Kitty asked as she saw most of the guys fawning over the new girl. It's cause she practically oozes sexuality. Tabitha said as she ate a grape. Well, at least one guy isn't like that. Jubilee said as she looked outside the window of the kitchen to Naruto who was busy telekinetically lifting weights trying to get the control necessary to do more than just crush them on accident as he'd done before. You think he's gay? Tabitha asked as she looked at Jubilee. No, Kitty exclaimed as she smacked the table with her hands. Seeing the shocked looks that he was getting, she realized she might have overreacted. I mean, no I don't think so. Kitty said as she sat back on her seat. Well, then why isn't he drawn to miss sexuality? I'm straight and even I'm drawn in by her sex appeal. Tabitha said as she pointed to herself. Maybe because he's not a pig like those guys. Kitty said as she defended Naruto. Oh honey, all men are pigs. Tabitha said with a condescending smirk. 
If all men are pigs, then why'd he give me these fierce glasses? Jubilee said with a smirk as she lowered her new pink sunglasses. He wants to get inside your pants obviously. Tabitha said as she reclined onto a table. Why don't we like ask him? Kitty suggested as she stood up. Fine, and you'll see that I'm right. Tabitha said as she ate the last of the grapes. Outside, Naruto was still lifting the weights and he saw himself getting better as he hadn't crushed a single one in his grip. Lifting up another one, he almost crushed it but was able to get himself under control. Hey Naruto. The slip in concentration caused him to crush the weights into tiny little balls. Uh, maybe we should come back later. Kitty said as she saw how easily he crushed the weights. Nah, it's okay. This happens a lot, Naruto said before gesturing with his hand and the weights returned to their original shape. So, what's up? Naruto asked as he usually didn't get bothered when he was training. Why do you give Jubilee the glasses? You want her to give you some? Tabitha asked without tact, raising an eyebrow at what she was insinuating. Naruto said, Jubilee's cute, but I'm about to go to college in a few months and starting a relationship now would just not be a good idea. As to why I gave her the glasses, I thought she'd like them. Naruto finished while shrugging his shoulders. Really? Then why aren't you fawning all over Miss Sex Appeal? Tabitha asked once again without tact. Frowning Naruto answered, It's cause I don't trust her. I've lived alone for a long time and I've learned to spot people who will be trouble and she has that kind of look. It also doesn't help the fact that she came here not to learn and master her abilities, but because she wanted to join the X-Men. She's not here because she wants to help mutant human relations, she's here because she has an ulterior motive, and that's why I don't trust her. She's hiding something and while everyone is entitled to their secrets, the secret she's hiding is going to be nothing but trouble for us. Completely shocked at what Naruto said, the girls couldn't come up with anything to say. Finally, Kitty asked, you haven't even spoken to her more than once and you don't trust her. That was something she couldn't believe. It's a feeling I get. I hope I'm wrong and that she's actually a nice person, but it doesn't help that my other senses are also screaming at me to be careful around her. Naruto said as he lifted up the weights and realized that it was easy to control how much strength to put in now. It seemed that his powers had grown again. Did he just assimilate Emma's abilities? Dropping the weights, he scratched his head and wondered what else he could do to test himself. He didn't notice the way the girls were looking at him. Snapping his eyes open, Naruto glared at the door to his room. Phasing out of bed, so that he didn't disturb Rogue, Naruto put on some boxer he left on the ground. Naruto phased underneath the floor and came out behind the person who had rudely tried to invade his mind. Lifting her up in a telekinetic field, Naruto narrowed his eyes when he saw her transform into a diamond-like form. Tell me what you were trying to do. Naruto threatened while holding her up. I just wanted to find out more about you. Emma said with that damn smirk of hers. Don't lie to me, you were trying to do something to me. Now, tell me or we'll find out if your diamond form has any flaws in it. Naruto said as his eyes began to glow red. Seeing that she may have bitten off more than she could chew, Emma replied, I've seen how you've looked at me during the last few days. I didn't like it, I just wanted you to trust me. You don't get someone's trust by digging into their mind. If anything you legitimize their distrust. Know this Emma, as of now you and I are on thin ice. If I see you do anything that I suspect to be against the best interest of everyone in this building, I will kill you. I'm not like the rest of the X-Men, so don't think that I'm bluffing. Naruto said before he began to apply pressure to entire form. Feeling the pressure beginning to build, Emma tried to say something but couldn't as her mouth was being held closed. Seeing her beginning to panic, Naruto let her drop. Phasing through her, Naruto went back into his room. Phasing off his boxers, he climbed back into bed and put his arm around Rogue. However, he was surprised when he felt her move his arm up. It seemed that she was awake. They probably weren't going to get much sleep. Activating his cryogenic abilities, Naruto felt himself become living ice. It was a strange feeling, but it felt nice. Telepathically telling his clone to activate the danger room, every single weapon released itself. Standing still, Naruto waited until they fired at him. Throwing his arms out, the entire danger room froze. 
Even the projectiles that were in midair froze completely. Lowering his arms, Naruto surveyed his use of power. In a single instant he brought the temperature of the entire room close to absolute zero. It wasn't even difficult. It was as simple as raising his arm. Shaking his head, he couldn't believe the potential that Bobby had. However, from what he had seen, Bobby wasn't anywhere near that yet. Exhaling and reverting back to normal, he tapped into his pyrokinetic abilities. Creating a small ball of fire, he then increased its intensity to such a degree that the ice began to melt. He began to lower the temperature in order to keep the weapons from being melted. Once all the ice melted, the weapons returned to their cavities to begin repairs. Naruto had his clone at the controls erase the logs of what happened and make it look like he was never here. Phasing through the danger room and up to the controls, he rejoined with his clone. Scratching the back of his head, Naruto confirmed that it was indeed becoming more and more difficult to practice his powers. They increased at such a rapid pace that he needed to increase the difficulty of his training and it was becoming difficult to do so in the mansion without anyone finding out. It was one of the reasons that he was in the danger room in the middle of the night. He needed a better training area. The danger room could only take so much damage before it needed to repair itself. Sighing, Naruto's clouded mind kept him from actually doing anything productive. He was now in a relationship with Rogue, he was feeling trapped in Xavier's school, he needed to train his powers, and he still needed to figure out what he wanted to do with his life. His purpose before becoming a mutant had been simple. To just live his life. He had no other goals besides just living. However, once he accepted the fact that he was a mutant with power far beyond most, he felt like he could finally do something for the world. At the moment, everyone in the world was still reeling in shock from Apocalypse, but it wouldn't be long before people gave in to their fear and began to attack mutants. The only issue was, should he be surprised or should he be prepared? Unfortunately, no matter how powerful he was or how many clones he could make, he was still one single person. He would need a team. Much like the X-Men, but one that didn't look like they were a Black Ops unit. The world needed an X-Factor, and he was it. Someone who was willing to do what was needed, but only as a last resort. Someone who wasn't afraid to let the world know when it was wrong and was willing to fight back. Feeling his clouded mind begin to focus, Naruto knew his purpose. Much like Xavier, he was going to protect the world from mutants who would abuse their power. However, he wasn't going to stop there. Should the world threaten mutants, he would protect them from the world, and like Magnus, he wasn't going to hide who he was. He was a mutant and he didn't care who knew. His path decided, he started walking towards Cerebro. He had a few things to prepare before he began to tread down his path. Waking up in a cold sweat, Naruto tried to figure out what the hell he had just seen. Phasing through his bed, he made sure he didn't wake Rogue. Going outside, he walked towards the cliff behind the mansion. Enjoying the cool night breeze, he sat down and tried to conjure up the vision he saw. There was a problem though, he couldn't actually remember what he saw. That was a first. Deciding to try and coax out the vision, he began to meditate. Within moments he lost all sense of time and he was able to drag up a few images from his vision, however they were completely useless without any sort of context. He tried to draw out more, but nothing came about. He would have continued, but he was pulled out of his meditation. Jean, what are you doing up so early? Early, it's almost noon. Opening his eyes, he looked around and noticed that the sun was high up in the sky. He had apparently stayed up all night meditating. What were you doing anyway? You were shining like a star. She asked him as she sat down next to him. I was glowing, he asked surprised and wondering if he had assimilated a new mutant power. Well not physically, your mind, it was like staring into the sun, she said as she reached out to touch the right side of his temple. You're not supposed to stare into the sun, you'll go blind like that, he responded as she poked his head. I wasn't looking with my eyes, doofus. She jabbed playfully as he swatted her hand. I had a weird dream, but I couldn't remember any of it. I was trying to dig for more. He explained as she nodded her head in understanding. Want me to try? She asked as she reclined on the ground. Involuntarily, his eyes were drawn immediately toward her navel. Not even a second later he moved them to her face as he realized what he did. 
Jean didn't seem bothered by it though. Sure, maybe you'll have better luck. He agreed as he closed his eyes and relaxed. Sitting up, Jean closed her eyes and connected it with Naruto's. Even though all of the surface thoughts fell away, she was still able to catch a glimpse of moments earlier when he had checked her out. Even though she knew it shouldn't matter, it did flatter her. All right now, you said you had trouble remembering the dream. Jean asked before she started looking around. It wouldn't do to just start snooping around randomly. Yeah, I usually have no trouble remembering my dreams, but this time all I get are images that don't make sense. He explained as the images came up and Jean got a good look through them. You do know that dreams don't usually make any sort of sense, right? She asked in a teasing tone and as she flipped through the images. A man in a red and blue spider costume, a green woman, a blonde woman in a leotard with a lightning bolt on it, and a small blonde girl with glowing green eyes. Except that my dreams usually do make sense. He explained as more images of previous dreams flew by her. Most of them went by so fast that she couldn't see a thing. However, one thing she did see was a giant red and purple blur. For some reason that one image filled her with trepidation. Okay, you're obviously not normal. She thought and felt a snort come through their link, I'm going to dig a bit deeper. Just to let you know, this might bring up some stuff you won't want anyone to see. At this she felt him become pensive. Everyone had secrets, this was a fact of life. Sometimes those secrets were embarrassing, sometimes they were horrible disgusting things. However, they were still private personal thoughts that no one else should have access to without permission. Go ahead, I trust you. Telepathy was an incredible thing. The feeling of absolute trust emanating from him was incredible. It was enough to make her feel embarrassed. Taking a deep breath, she dug deep. A moment later she knew she had made a mistake. Gasping, Xavier didn't feel the blood coming from his nose as he was completely focused upon the incredible psychic power emanating from Jean and Naruto. Blinking his eyes, he realized that Aurora was asking him if he was alright. I'm fine Aurora, but I fear Jean and Naruto are not. Wiping the blood away, he rolled out of his office. In the ante room, he saw that Emma had suffered the same thing he had. Going outside, he saw that some of the younger students were drawn to the spectacle in front of them. All of you get away from there now. Heading his warning the students began backing away from the swirling vortex of energy around the seated forms of Jean and Naruto. What's going on with Jean? Scott asked with worry in his voice. I'm not sure, but the pure psychic energy emanating from them is beyond anything I've ever felt. Xavier said as he observed the very visible surges of psychic energy. If anyone gets near them, it's very likely that they'll be killed. Emma said as she held her head with her hand. However, before anyone could make any sort of plan, the psychic energies disappeared both Jean and Naruto collapsed. Rushing forward, Scott cradled Jean's head. He didn't see any sort of injury on her, but if his recent head injury could attest to, it was best to err on the side of caution. Picking her up, he saw that Hank had done the same for Naruto. Going towards the infirmary, he hoped that nothing was wrong. Snapping his eyes open, Naruto sat up in a panic until he realized that he was just in the infirmary. Scrunching his face in concentration, he realized that he couldn't remember anything. At least until he turned his head and saw Jean laying on the table. In a flash, he remembered what happened. Getting off the medical table, he walked over to Jean. Looking her over, he knew that Hank would have taken care of any wounds, but he had to make sure. Thankfully though, there weren't any he could see. Calming down, he instead began to focus on what happened when Jean tried to help him dig deeper into his psyche. God damn, what happened? Looking at Jean, he realized that she was waking up. Morning beautiful, he said without really thinking about it. Morning handsome, you know, I think I can get used to waking up to this. She said before she reached up and kissed him. Kissing her back, he crawled on top of her table. Moving down to her neck, he slipped his hand under her shirt. Not one to be outdone, she slipped her hands under his. Smirking, he teleported them into his room. Scott, I understand you are worried, but waiting in the infirmary will do no one any good. You needed to take a walk to clear your head, Xavier said as Scott walked with him. I know professor, but it just doesn't feel right, Scott explained as he rubbed the back of his head. Smiling, 
Xavier was about to say something else when the door to the infirmary opened for them. However, they both froze when they were greeted with an empty room. Where are they? Rolling into the room, Xavier caught a whiff of sulfur. I think Naruto might have teleported them. But why? Scott asked as his concern for Jean began to grow. It's possible that he's disoriented and not aware of where he is. After all, we don't really know what happened to them in that psychic vortex. Xavier explained as he tried to track them through his telepathy, but was unable to. I'll tell everyone to keep an eye out for Jean and Naruto. Nodding to the professor's plan, Scott added, I'll see if maybe Jean is at one of her favorite spots in the city. Nodding, Xavier went on to tell everyone in the mansion. That was amazing, I didn't know you could do that. Naruto said as he pulled Jean's shirt off. I love the professor like a father, but I do need my privacy. She smirked as she pulled off his shirt. Flipping them over, she smirked at the lust in his eyes. Straddling him, she reached behind her back and undid the hooks on her bra. Pulling it off she tossed it off the side as she used her telekinesis to hold Naruto's hands above his head. Feeling him buck his hips brought a grin to her face. Someone's getting impatient. You would too, if you had my view. He countered as he started to relax. Smirking, she released her hold on his hands. Seeing him rise so quickly brought a laugh to her as he flipped them over so that he was on top. Jiggling the doorknob, Robe smirked as it wouldn't turn. Told ya, he'd be in his room. Okay, you were right. Now I'll go get him out. Kitty said as she phased through the door. A moment later, she came back out with her entire face flushed. They're a bit preoccupied at the moment. With what exactly? Robe questioned as Kitty seemed reluctant to say any more. There, ah, uh, they're having sex. Kitty whispered as her face got even more flushed. Hearing that, Robe began to bang on the door. Not wanting to be caught nearby, Kitty phased through the floor. Although, she stayed nearby to see and hear what happened. Meanwhile, Robe continued to bang on the door with her fist until it opened. However, she stopped when she saw it was Jean who opened the door wearing nothing but a bed sheet. Feeling tears come to her eyes, she ran even as Jean called out to her. Do you know what that was about? Jean asked Naruto as he shrugged. Shrugging back, she closed and locked the door as she went back towards the bed. Letting the sheet drop, she asked, now where were we? This is not going to be good for anyone. Xavier said out loud as Kitty told him where Naruto and Jean were and what they had been doing. Rubbing his temples, he began to make his way to towards Naruto's room and at the same time using his telepathy to think very loudly about going to Naruto's room. He really didn't want to roll in on his students during their private moments. Seriously, both Naruto and Jean said at the same time as they heard Xavier's loud thoughts. See, this is why I told you to skip the foreplay. Jean said as she started putting her clothes back on. Hey, I like foreplay. Naruto defended as he put his clothes back on as well. Whatever, let's just get this over with. Jean said as Xavier arrived. I don't believe you. Naruto said as Xavier explained the situation. I have to agree with him professor. That sounds just a bit ridiculous. Jean said as she couldn't believe what she had just heard. I understand that it's difficult to comprehend or even understand, but the truth is that you two aren't dating, nor have you even met before this past month. Seeing that they didn't believe, he decided it would be best if he showed them his memories. Would you mind if I showed you my memories to see if they trigger yours? Seeing them agree, he closed his eyes and focused. Within moments, both Jean and Naruto were holding their heads in pain. Stopping when he heard them gasp, he said, are you two all right? The hell was that, Naruto said as his eyes focused on nothing in particular. Those were our real memories, but then what about our other set of memories? Jean asked desperately. I'm not sure what happened to you two in that vortex, but from what you explained, it seems that you two dove too deep into each other's psyche. This caused your minds to, I guess the best term would be, unravel. He explained as he interlocked his fingers and thought about it even more. You have to understand, that this has never happened before, and to my knowledge, wasn't possible. He tried his best to ease the revelation, but he could see that it wasn't really doing anything. If our minds unraveled, then how did we get back? 
Naruto's question caused Xavier to close his eyes and try and come up with some sort of hypothesis. I'm not sure, but, and this is conjecture, your memories still existed. They were just separated from your minds. The human mind likes to keep things as they are, so it wouldn't be difficult for it to rebuild itself given enough time. It probably helped that you two shared a few similar memories when you two spent some time with each other. This was probably essential to rebuilding your minds. He said before he sighed and looked off to the side. If I had known this was a possibility, I would have trained you two more thoroughly. Xavier said with guilt in his voice. Professor, it's, Jean was cut off when Naruto teleported away in a bamf. Standing up to go after him, Xavier stopped Jean. He's confused Jean. He needs some time to himself, and I'm sure you do as well. Understanding where he was coming from, she nodded. At that moment though, the doors to Xavier's study was opened by Scott. When she felt her heart beat quicken, and a surge of affection flow through her, Jean knew she was in trouble. One week later, has anyone seen Naruto? Jean asked the students in the kitchen who shook their heads. Leaving the kitchen, she decided to ask Logan to help her find him. Stopping by the garage, she found him working on his bike. Logan. Sup Red, he asked without turning around. Can you help me find Naruto? She asked as he began to wipe his hands on a towel. No can do, Blondie asked me not to help you find him. Wait, you've actually talked to him. I can't get him to talk to me without him bamfing away. Hearing Logan snort, she raised an eyebrow. Bamfing, he asked with a smirk. It's the sound he makes when he teleports, but when did you talk to him? She asked desperate to get information. During our morning spar, gotta tell ya, whatever happened between you two has really gotten him all kinds of messed up. I stabbed him six times when it's usually only twice, Logan said nonchalantly. Ignoring the fact that Logan and Naruto stabbed each other, she asked, why won't you help me find him? Getting the hint that she was desperate, he answered, he said to meet him at your favorite place. Scrunching her face in thought as she exited the garage, she didn't hear Logan say one more thing. Stupid teenage drama. Walking to the gazebo, Jean knew she would find Naruto there. Sure enough, he was there. However, she could tell something was bothering him. His tense back and shoulders were evidence of his mental state. Of course the emotions she was feeling from him told her a lot more. Naruto, can we finally talk or are you going to bamf away again? She was pleasantly surprised when he turned around instead of bamfing like she expected him to. Sorry about avoiding you, I just needed some time alone to think things through. The guilt he was exuding let her know that he was genuinely sorry. It's fine, just tell me that next time. After all, I needed some too, she admitted as he leaned his head back to stare at the ceiling. What do you think of all this? He asked as he looked at her. Looking away from him, she replied, the professor. Jean, what do you think? He repeated, knowing what he meant, she started over. I don't know what to think. The professor thinks that what we experienced wasn't real and yet. The memories and emotions we created are real even if the world wasn't. He finished for her. Smiling she nodded, but then it disappeared as she thought about something else. Where does that leave us? He asked the question she had on her mind. And where does that leave Scott? She added as her heart pulled her in two directions. Huffing angrily, Naruto turned around to stare at the ocean. You already know that I love you. And I love you back, but I love Scott as well. She said as Naruto's head hung. You want to know the funny thing? I don't care that you love Scott. What I care about is the fact that you're so indecisive. He said with a laugh. It's not as simple as flipping a coin. She reported angrily. But it could be. He shot back as he gripped the banister harder. What about Rogue? She shot back angrily. I've already broken up with her. He said as he turned his head to look at her. When our memories came back I realized I needed to break up with her. After all, she's not the one I love. The look on Jean's face made him feel like scum, but she needed to know this. If I chose Scott, would you be happy for me? She asked as his heart stopped. No, he replied honestly. Scott's a good guy and I wouldn't wish him harm, but no. I would never wish you happiness with another person. I want you to be happy with me, he said earnestly as he turned around. 
and I know that you feel the same way if the anger I felt coming off you was any indication when you asked about Rogue. How'd she take it? She asked as she changed the topic. She cried obviously, but more than anything I'm sure she hates me. After all, she thinks that I only used her for sex. He explained as he turned back around to look at the sky. Did you use her sex? She asked curiously. I used her for companionship. It just so happens that sex became part of it. He answered after he thought about it. What do you mean? The confusion was obvious in her voice. Growing up in foster care is not easy. He said as memories started flooding in. Moving from home to home never having a chance to actually make roots. That gets to you. It doesn't help that whenever it seems like you've found a permanent home you're forced to move again because the family that took you in had a change of heart. He explained with bitterness. Let me tell you, the day I aged out of the foster care system was the happiest day of my life. He said with a mocking laugh. So yeah, I wanted companionship and Rogue provided that. It's messed up, but you don't really care about that do you? He asked as he walked closer to Jean. After all, dragging his hand up her side, he smiled when her breathing deepened. What did you tell me the night we first made love? Savoring the sensation of his hand on her skin, she closed her eyes, no matter what, you are mine. Cupping her face with his other hand, he asked, and what did I say? Opening her eyes, she looked into his eyes. Gladly. Dragging his head down to meet hers she pushed him back against the banister as she took charge. Getting the hint, he bamfed them away. So you chose Empire? Jean asked as she slowly kissed down Naruto's chest. Yeah, they have a great science program. I also have an interview with one of the professors. If it goes well, I'll have an internship. He said as he raised an eyebrow as she stopped. I hope it does, she said as she rested her head on her hand. Me too, although it does mean that I might have to move closer to the campus. He said as he thought about all of his future plans. I get what you mean. Metro is pretty far from here too and I don't want to spend hours just making the commute. She said as he rubbed little circles on her back. If only there was a way for us both to get to our respective schools and yet be near each other. Naruto said with a smile. Really, you want to move in together? She asked surprised. Why not? Besides the fact that technically we haven't even been dating for more than a day. She asked as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. Well in that case, you're an easy date Ms. Gray. He smirked as she smacked his chest. Seriously though, that's a flimsy excuse. Can you seriously tell me that I'm not the person you trust most in the world? He asked without a hint of humor. You already know the answer to that. She rolled her eyes that she even had to say it. And you are the person I trust most in the world. Hell, I told you my plan. I literally have no secrets that you don't know. He said. I'd love to, but I know that a lot of relationships end when they reach this stage. She said still unsure. True but don't you want to find out if we can? Besides, if there's a mess I'll clean it up, he said as he created a clone next to him. Or more accurately, they'll clean it up. Looking at the clone and back to Naruto, Jean asked, how many can you make? Seeing them both close their eyes in thought, had Jean smiling. I don't think I've actually ever tried to find a limit. With a saucy smile, she asked, can you make another? Morning after, holding his chest, Naruto did his best to draw breath back into his lungs. However, all he got was a horrible wheezing sound. Across the room Logan smoked a cigar as he looked down at Naruto. That's for involving me in your damn teenage drama. What? Was? That? Naruto asked as his lungs finally started working normally again. Kung Fu, he said as he blew out a smoke ring. You know Kung Fu. The shock in his voice was obvious as Logan smirked at him. There's a lot you don't know about me kid. This is just one of them. Taking a deep drag from his cigar he closed his eyes enjoying the smoke. Can you teach me? Laughing, Logan replied, sure, but it's going to be painful. 2 a.m. I hope he gets the memory of how bad this sewer stinks. He said annoyed as he phased through the street and into the sewer below. Walking through sewage, he expanded his mind. Cerebro said that there was a group of mutants living down here, but sewer tunnels aren't that large. I have no idea how they could manage to survive down here. 
Finding a group of mines deeper into the tunnels, he felt one coming his way. Turning to Diamond, he concentrated and was able to have light phase through him making him invisible. Seeing a bald pale man come out of a corner, he saw him look around confused before turning back. Following after him, he soon arrived at the Morlock tunnels. Staying invisible, he went around looking and listened to what was going on. However, he was soon drawn into a hushed conversation that was going on between the bald gray man, a guy with armor plates all around him, and a woman with an eye patch. You didn't find anything Caliban? The woman asked concerned. No, but they were there. He said assuredly, it was probably a teleporter Callisto. The plated man said, maybe, Evan, go check and see if any of your X-Men friends have been near the sewers for any reason. Seeing Evan nod to Callisto let Naruto know that she was in charge. However, he realized that he had finished what he had come for. He could feel he had assimilated more mutant abilities. Quickly delving into their minds, he saw what their abilities were and took that knowledge with him. Levitating away from the Morlocks, he phased through the roof until he reached street level. Flying up high, he reverted from his diamond form and he flew towards the school. Thankfully, it was night which meant that he could fly about unnoticed. Along the way to school though, he activated one of his new abilities. Feeling every X gene within miles of himself was a surreal experience. He did make a discovery though. There was another with the X gene a few blocks away. Flying towards its location, he found himself at an apartment complex. Once again turning intangible, he activated one of his new powers. Seeing his body camouflage itself with his surroundings had him grinning. Phasing through a few floors, he soon found himself inside the bedroom of a young boy. His green skin was an immediate indicator that he was a mutant. Diving into his mind, he saw that the kid's powers were the ability to shut down energy fields. Including those produced by mutant abilities. Grinning widely, he focused on remembering the lesson that Logan taught him. Flashback. Remember kid. Focusing your mind can help you better channel your own abilities. Take my healing for example, if I leave it alone I'll heal from anything, but it takes time. However, if I can focus my mind enough I can actually make myself heal faster. Of course, this all depends on being able to actually focus, so let's see if you can do that while I'm carving you to bits. Feeling his own mutant power activate, he directed it towards the child sleeping in the bed. Actively using his power to assimilate another mutant's abilities was very different than just letting it work passively. He could actually feel the assimilation as it progressed. Usually he only noticed when he absorbed a new power. Completing his assimilation, he left the apartment complex by phasing through the roof. Aiming his hand at a light post, he released an energy pulse. Immediately, the light post shut down. Releasing another one, the light post started back up. Laughing in jubilation, he flew back towards the school. Phasing into his room, he walked towards the bed. Seeing Jean sleeping put a smile on his face, however he then frowned at his other self who was holding her. Touching his other self, he was absorbed into the original's body. Waking up from the influx of memories, he smiled at the new abilities he now possessed. It would exponentially speed up his plan. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.